there, and welcome to this latest Flipped History video. This video has, let me just see here, this video has four learning intentions. The first learning intention is to explain elements of continuity and change in the colonial economy. The second learning intention is to define, using a map, the territory of the province of Quebec after 1774. The third learning intention is to explain the main features of the Quebec Act. And the last learning intention and what we'll be doing in class is to place events on a timeline and judge um, the points of view of various historical groups. After the conquest, there were elements of continuity, which means things that stayed the same, and also change in the colonial economy. The uh, major thing that stayed the same was that the colonial economy continued to be based mostly on the fur trade. After the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713, uh, the British gained access to uh, the Hudson's Bay area which allowed the Hudson's Bay Company to dominate the fur trade in the north. And this, of course, continued after the British had taken control of most of North America. However, the former French fur trade territory in the interior was up for grabs. Some French merchants tried to um, continue the trade, but um, English uh, merchants, and particularly Scottish merchants, m soon moved in to take control. They came to Quebec and, more importantly, Montreal, which continued to be the center of the fur trade in the new province of Quebec. These uh, Scottish and English traders were successful because they uh, went into the interior they hired the voyageurs who had knowledge of the territory, and most importantly, they had business contacts in the new mother country. So they were able to uh, find a market for these furs. In the 1780s, a new company based out of Montreal was started to give competition to the Hudson's Bay Company. This was known as the Northwest Company. So what we happened is that the Northwest Company gradually took control of the fur trade centered around the Great Lakes and the former French territory, while the Hudson's Bay Company continued with the northern fur trade centered, of course, around Hudson's Bay. The Quebec Act was a law passed by the British government designed to reconstitute the governing of the province of Quebec. The first thing that it did was it extended the territory of the province of Quebec to once again include the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. This was very much close to what the territory uh, had been under the French regime. Indeed, one of the purposes of the uh, Quebec Act was to give a semblance of government very much like what the Canadiens had had um, under the French. And one English parliamentarian said instead of Louis the Sixteenth, they would have George the Third. So there were a number of features of the Quebec Act that made it seem like um, it was the government back under the French. So. One of the things that the British did was that they modified the Oath of Allegiance to make it more acceptable for Canadiens to participate in the running of the colony. So now Canadiens could um, participate in the council. The requirement for setting up a legislative assembly was deemed, quote unquote, inexpedient, which means that it wasn't expected of the uh, governor. The legal system was changed to include a mixture of British criminal law and the reinstitution of French civil laws. French civil laws were important because 
what it allowed was the church to once again uh, start collecting what's known as the tithe, which is a tax, and it also gave the seigneurs back their um, position um, in terms of the relationship between the habitants that lived on the seigneuries and um, themselves. Now, there was another aspect to the um, Quebec Act, and this had to do with the external situation and the wider context of what was going on in North America. We'll look at this um, more in depth in our next class. However, um, at the time, the 13 colonies were starting to um, grow dissatisfied with um, the British government. And they were starting to um, get towards the point where there would be an open rebellion against Great Britain. So the British wanted to keep the Canadian loyal to them, and that was one of the reasons why um, the expansion of the territory, the reinstitution of French civil laws, and lowering the threshold standard for the Oath of Allegiance to allow them to um, participate in government was brought in. Indeed, Catholics had more rights and um, respect in Quebec than they did in Great Britain. The reaction to the Quebec Act um, was somewhat neutral for French Canadians, but it enraged the Americans in the 13 colonies. They called the Quebec Act one of the, quote, intolerable acts. They were angry that the territory that they had fought the French for in the Ohio Valley was given back to the French. They thought that that territory should belong to themselves, and they were also angered that um, Catholics were given more rights. The American colleagues were uh, firmly Protestant. So um, instead of calming tensions maybe in North America, perhaps the Quebec Act only enraged them even more. Well, thanks for watching, and once again, while you're doing your summary, please consider this unit's essential question. Were the British the friendly conquerors?